Welcome to NerdHouseGeeks.com as we begin the second part of our series, ASP.NET Core, and we're going to dive into the program CS file. This is part two of our series. In part one, we covered what, it need, what you need to get started. And if you, do, if you happen to come to this video first, you can go to part one, see what you need to get started, and then continue on. In part one, we did a deep dive into the project file um, for uh, .NET Core 3.0. I since then upgraded it to 3.1. <laughs> Uh, now we're going to do a deep dive into the program CS file of a .NET Core 3.1 web app. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that um, we will be exploring different project types. And so these project types all have templates that automatically generate when you create uh, select a project and the four that we're going to mention here are console app, web app, API and background worker services. Uh, there may be oh, there may be more but these are the four that I know of that when you select that type they, they uh, create a program.cs file and they do different things as we're going to get into. Now and all of .NET Core, all these different program types, what do these program, program types have in common? And what they have in common is that they're all okay. <laughs> What they have in common is they are all console apps. And even when you talk about Web API, the root to all these applications in .NET Core is that they're all console apps, but they do different things. And in some cases, they have different names and do the same thing in respect to the program CS. And so we're going to get to that. So right now, I'm getting ready to show you a demo of what the program CS file looks like after you click create a console app this is an example of what that file would look like when you click on the program CS as you can see there, you have the program class you have the main method and um, it writes out hello world okay so that there is call a console app and when you look at the program CS you see what a console app is okay no interface, you just pure code functions. All right, now we're gonna take a look at what the web app program.cs looks like when it's auto-generated from the template. Hmm, there's the program class and there's the main method. The main method has something different, but it's a console app. And if you want to go back to the previous one, you can see the slight difference, right? Cool. With that said, um, we have the create host builder and all that stuff. That create host builder does something that extends it beyond just being a console app, but at the root, console app uh, program class. Now here we're looking at an API they're identical. Okay, I'm going to go back to the previous slide. That's the web application. If you look at where it says namespace, that's the API. Okay, and so right now, this is a demo here of the program.cs for a worker service. And it's similar like all of them, except when you get into what the create the create host builder line is and when you go to that property and what it does it differs so the difference between a regular console app and the other three types is that they have what is called a generic host 
So what is a generic host? On startup of an ASP.NET Core app, it builds a host. That's where you sort of create hosts. That host encapsulate all of the app's resources such as uh, an HTTP server implementation, your middleware components, we'll get to all of that, logging, dependency injection, configuration. There are two types, uh, there are two different hosts. One is the .NET generic host builder, and the other one is the ASP.Core web host builder. The .NET generic host builder is recommended. The ASP.NET Core web host is available only for backward compatibility. So if you're upgrading from 2. Point whatever to 3.1 for compatibility reasons. Uh, we will walk through this code and get, um, get to follow when the generic host builder is generated. But that's what it is. The host encapsulates all the application resources. And they do this so that when you're shut down, it's an easy shutdown. So here, we're back to uh, the cool application.web where we initially started all of this. And uh, we're gonna look at this highlighted code on the screen here. And we're going to talk about the iHost Builder Interface. The iHost Builder Interface is a program initialization abstraction. In other words, this interface has the, the methods and properties for initializing programs, which goes hand in hand with what the host is. It's a so all the softwares, all your applications resources are in there. So it has to fire off different things, okay? Um, now the next section of this code we're gonna look at is the create host builder method. Now, as you look at the, just looking at that method, you see that it allows you to pass the string array arcs in. And if you look above in the main method, you can see it says create host, args build run okay so the create the, the create host builder method defines the entry point of the assembly the host builder is a program initialization utility so they that i host builder interface the create host builder method are hand in hand well what do we want to initialize and so that's the question, and we're gonna get right into it. The line that you see highlighted now, which is the host.create default builder args. The host.create, there we have it. That right there is the generic host. So a few slides back I asked, hey, what is the generic host? That right there is the gen generic host, the preferred way of uh, for hosting the things you need for a .NET Core application. This is the direction we go forward from here now. It's, um, a host is an object that encapsula encapsulate an application's resources. So, dependency injection, logging, configuration and other i hosted service implementations we'll get down to that there when a host starts it calls i host service dot a start async on each implementation of an i hosted service that it finds in the di container in a web app one of the i hosted services implementation is a web service that starts is a web service that starts that web service is Castro okay so um, I don't want to go too fast here so when that create that create host builder fires off um, 
it looks for i hosted services that it finds in your dependency injection and we'll get into that dependency injection when we start talking about the startup and those of you who have code before this is where all of this is taking place that dependency injection all your loggers and all your configurations that's what's happening here that's what's the valid part and that's what changes this console app into a dotnet web dotnet core 3.0 web application that's that's when we're enhancing what the uh the console app to the next level <laughs> so we look at the other line of code here um, and what it does is co the configure web host defaults and that right there is the call to start Crestal as a web service and configure it using the application configuration defaults. So um, those configuration defaults is Hey, use Kestrel as your web service and enable IIS integration. Uh, load configurations from your app settings.json or um, file. Um, um, load environment variables, command line arguments, because we're passing the command line arguments on and other configuration sources. Uh, if you set up logging, send logging output to the console and or and debug provider. So, uh, so Kestrel isn't just a web server. Kestrel is a cross-platform web server. That's cool because Kestrel, as of today, Kestrel can run on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So that's, that's super cool. I mean, there was a time when we couldn't create applications that touch the Mac OS or Linux without, I, I don't even remember what. I just remember it never being this easy before. Mm -hmm. Now, the next line we're going to examine here is uh, use startup. And so, of course, those of us who've built applications before, we know this startup file. This is where we configure everything. And the use startup line that you see there, the web builder use startup, specifies the startup type by the to be used by the web host. The startup class is what we will get into in our next video. There's a whole lot of things that happen in there, so let me run a demo of the startup. Of, an, of, the, of our application, but that program CS, it is a very, very, very important file to it all, and I, I just wanted to break it down and kind of keep this video short too. <laughs> so I'll get into the startup class after this, <laughs> okay? So a quick summary of the create default and the configure web host default. Those are the key parts that makes it a .NET Core app or API. Um, and uh, there's a lot more going on there in the interest of time. <laughs> so this slide here talks about the, all the default settings. So it, you, I'm gonna go back real quick, let me see. The, Create default builder, configure web host default. The, this document here, this slide, um, you can go to this URL that we have here, and that's to the Microsoft web page, to the actual location here. But these are the things that are going on in those defaults. This is the list of defaults. I, 
Someone would be very mean to ask you this in an interview question. I don't even think I would get it. I'd be upset that they asked. But just take a look at the many things that those defaults are and that, you know, none of this is just magic. It's all happening on purpose. Set the content route to the path, your current, di current directory route. So, um, uh, load host configuration from environmentals, car, uh, command lines, and all those little things is what, as you can see, very big to the whole .NET core, but the very base console app with, with a generic host. And that generic host is what changes it from just being a regular concept, console app to these other services. And we're only focusing on ASP.NET Core, Program File CS. I did it. Thank you very much. Hey, if you found this video very helpful, click the like button below. And please don't be shy to subscribe to Nerd House Geeks. We are constantly updating this channel with new and interesting content. If it's more convenient for you to see us on Facebook, please like our page. And when we have updates, we put them on Facebook and you'll be informed there as well too. And to the entire LinkedIn community, thank you very much for your support. We also have a company page up there that you can follow and we'll keep content updated there as well. So thank you very much.